All right, we are about 24 hours away from Under Siege, which is their uh, their next TNA Plus offering. Should be a decent show. The card is decent enough. Um, show was definitely thrown together. <clears throat> we just had Rebellion two weeks ago, and they're they're uh, jumping right into this. And that happens a couple times throughout the year where uh, they'll have a, a TNA Plus show that just really, really rushed and thrown together. Uh, for the most part, they're able to have kind of you know a decent build, uh, but this was more like Eric Bischoff says about AEW. That, you know they have excuses for matches rather than storylines. So um, we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my thoughts real quick on it. Um, before that though, I'm gonna run down uh, the latest uploads I've got here on the here on the channel. If you haven't checked them out already. Uh, over the past week, I've got an opinion piece on Tessa Blanchard and if she deserve, deserves a second chance with TNA. I've got a piece on the system and their recent winning ways. I got a really good TNA mailbag episode uh, focusing on the low rebellion buys and what I would do to increase business for the television show. The latest episode of Power Moves where I'm reviewing NWA Power. It, is, uh, it has done the second highest uh, numbers for a NWA review that I've done. So... I'm very excited about that. The first was the very, very first episode. So uh, very happy with how that did. Of course, the latest Impact review and then a couple opinion pieces on Trevor Lee, if he's a fit with the current TNA roster. And same with Jinder Mahal, if he is a, a fit and if he is a you know, eventual world champion of this promotion. So definitely check those out. If you get the opportunity, you're looking for a little TNA content for the day first time here consider hitting that subscribe button all right so we're going to get into this card here real quick there's one pre-show match as of now that has been announced and it's the fbi in action i don't know who their opponents are going to be uh pco and jake something are already on the card and there are crutches for surprise opponents um i guess tommy dreamer is a possibility but you know, this could be the, I don't know, it's a it's a six-man, so I was going to say it could be the Mace Mansoor spot. I don't really know, um, but I am going to pick whoever their opponents are. I think the FBI has already established themselves as jobbers, unfortunately, even though I'm a big Zach Clayton fan, but I think that's how they've established themselves already. So whoever, and I know they did media to promote this thing, but uh, I'm pretty confident that their opponent will win the match. Um. They've got PCO and Jordan Grace taking on Break Glass in case of emergency Khan and Steph Delander. This is probably the one match that out of this whole thing that it probably has the least amount of interest. This was the Matt Cardona spot at one point, and that could have worked. But instead, we're getting PCO versus Khan for the most one-sided feud currently in TNA. And uh Jordan Grace versus Steph Delander three. Another one-sided feud. So there's very, very little interest in this match. I think Jordan Grace and PCO will win, though. There's really no reason for Steph Delander and Khan to win this. God forbid we get Khan a victory. Hammerstone versus Jake something. I've got Hammerstone winning this match. This is the one match out of this whole thing that really deserved some kind of build. Um, instead, it was bumping into each other backstage. And this, you know, this can be a, a show stealer. But we're in a position here where both of these guys need a win. Neither of these guys should be losing. So that makes for an interesting match because uh, someone is going to get a, some momentum and someone's going to lose a lot of it. But this really, really, out of everything on here, deserves some kind of build. It's the freshest match on this entire card by a long shot. And it's just throw, a thrown-together match. Two guys in their underwear wrestling. So um, it should be very good, but I'm really going to go with Hammerstone winning here. There's also a possibility that this ends up as some kind of no contest, and they do it again. They're doing a lot of rematches right now. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't see this again, but um, I'm going with Hammerstone. Got a tag team match of Eric Young and Josh Alexander taking on Frankie Kazarian and Steve Macklin. I don't understand why this match is really happening. Uh, but keep in mind, I was only at the tapings. I haven't watched anything television-wise and what's going on backstage. 
I've got Frankie Kazarian and Steve Macklin winning here. Uh, Frankie Kazarian just took a loss in his street clothes on TV. Steve Macklin took a loss to Santana on pay-per-view. Even though Eric Young also lost on pay-per-view, I just um, I don't think they're going back to the Josh Alexander Golden Boy win all his matches just yet. So I've got Frankie Kazarian and Steve Macklin winning this thing. The one match that I really, truly care about here is the TNA Knockouts World Tag Team Championship of Danny Luna and Jody Threat against Masha Slamovich and Alicia Edwards. It is time to bring the Knockouts tag titles home to the system. If Alicia does not win a title here, then she never will in TNA. So um, I've got them winning. I've got Masha, Masha and Alicia winning. I don't think Masha will be a part of the system, but I think she will engage with the system, which should make for much better television than keeping the titles on Danny Luda and Jody Threat, who cut no promos or anything like that. They have hardly a, a presence on the show. So the best thing they can do is um, add these titles to the system and really continue to, to build the system up. So I've got those um, those girls winning, and that's a lot of the reason I want to watch this thing live because I want to see Alicia get her first title. X Division Championship, Mustafa Ali. He's taking on either Trey Miguel or Ace Austin. That match is tonight. I know who it is, um, but regardless of who, who, uh, which opponent he has here, whom he faces, Mustafa Ali is going to win this thing. He is going to be Trinity in 2024. He will not lose until his way out the door, likely to Jake something. And then... And and they might throw some other matches together on the episode tonight. I really have no idea because this does look like this card is maybe a match short. Um, outside of the pre-show, it's one. Excuse me. I did not hit mean to hit that intro. I was saying outside of the pre-show, I already forgot what I counted to. One, two, three, four, five, six matches. I would love for them to keep it at six. I've said many times these Impact Plus shows are too long. So uh, I would love to see just those six matches, but common sense says they're probably going to add one or two matches tonight. I don't really care about the show that much to to wait for it. But the main event is the system. It's Moose, Eddie Edwards, and Brian Myers versus Matt Hardy, Mike Bailey, and Trent Seven. Um, the system's going to lose this match, even though I did an, uh, I did a piece on their their winning streak and their winning ways and them being an actual stable that and, and faction that's actually winning you know you go back to the ovees of the world and honor no more and they're losing every time they go out there like this is an actual stable that's winning matches however they're going to try to get a uh, title match for matt hardy here versus moose because they went back to the formula of someone coming to surprise at the very end of the show establishing themselves as the number one contender never really fails but um, Matt Hardy most likely uh, is going to pin Brian Myers here. And I'm hoping they are not the main event at Slammiversary because that would not be a good match. It's it's better served to be a, um, a cinematic match than an actual match. So Matt Hardy does have Speedball Mountain to bail him out here. Speedball Mountain beats nobody, and but somehow just continue to end up in the main event. Uh, but with that being said, that will be the winning team. I know that, I know that's a, a, a freaking fact. Uh, Bailey and Trent Seven, they cannot possibly lose another match. They've been losing, uh, getting beat like a drum to this versus the system. So that's how it's going to be. This is just going to be to start setting up the road to Slammiversary, I guess, a little bit. I think we're going to have another TNA Plus show between now and then, you know, and some things will advance there. But I'm not expecting. One of their top shows here. It should be solid enough, though. And as long as Alicia wins the tag team titles, I will be content with whatever happens on this show. I'm your boy, BQ. Thanks for checking me out. Peace.